Professor Rolf Jacobson of Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, remarked during a podcast this week about the gospel reading for today that he'd seen a variant text of Matthew 18 that reads, If a member of the church sins against you, talk about them behind their back and then post about it on social media so that everyone will know. And after that, report them to human resources. And if anyone disagrees with you, they are evil. Of course, he was joking that this is an actual text, but deadly serious that this is a more accurate description of how we deal with conflict than what Jesus proposes. And let's be clear, Jesus' proposal has its own issues. Not every conflict or problem can be solved this way, either personally or as a church. For one thing, it may not be safe for someone to confront in private someone who has harmed them. And while Matthew's community was no doubt very familiar with the experience of being put out of a community, which, which we've talked about before and which they had some very strong feelings about, it's also true that putting people out because of conflict instead of inviting people in for reconciliation is not what Jesus ultimately had in mind. Unfortunately, excommunication can be and sometimes has been used by the church to the detriment of both the church and the church's people. People have gotten really hurt. Not to mention the issues of who gets to decide what is and is not considered going astray. But let's look at what Jesus is saying more broadly. Frequently in his teaching, Jesus acknowledges that people get led astray. Being led astray is just part of being human and not some kind of grave sin to Jesus. On the other hand, he's pretty hard on those who lead others astray, who in the gospel are often the Pharisees. And the story that he tells just before this passage the one that actually gives rise to what he says today is the story of the shepherd leaving the 99 sheep in the mountains to go after the one that had been led astray and the rejoicing when that one sheep is brought back into the fold. That's Jesus' ultimate hope, that everyone, even those who stray, will be able to come back into the fold. It's not about putting people out. It's about bringing people in, and it's really important to remember them. But first, there's the uncomfortable part about speaking out against sinful behavior. A lot of us are deeply troubled by this part, and for good reason. There truly is some bad history and some bad present in which accusations are made in bad faith with the hope of misleading people or bringing someone or something down. And even when we need to speak, and we'll do so in good, in good faith, it is just plain difficult to bring up what offends us. Then we struggle to find the words with which we can speak truth. And oftentimes those who are willing to speak out are castigated by those who disagree with them, as well as those who just wish they wouldn't rock the boat. And of course, that's another example of privilege, that those who aren't suffering would prefer not to be confronted with the suffering of others, but those others are still suffering, whether we're looking or not. And sometimes, as Professor Jacobson pointed out with humor, we can get all self-righteous about making sure that everyone knows that we've been wronged. We make ourselves judge and jury and work to line everyone up on our side, and that must make Jesus so tired. And so sometimes we just shrug and move on. Nobody wants to be a scold. Well, maybe some people do. But standing up for what is right, and sometimes literally it means speaking out against what is wrong. We are called to resist evil, and that isn't just about keeping our heads down until the heat blows over. And certainly we know that avoiding conversation about wrongdoing is counterproductive even as we continue to avoid it. But for us Christians, bringing into the open, into the light, as Paul might put it, bringing into the open wrongs that are being done is the first step, not to punishment, 
but to reconciliation. We get all focused on punishment as being the same word as justice. But in biblical terms, justice is much more akin to reconciliation, making things right. Speaking out is not to push away, but to name injustice in the hope of correction for the good of the community. In Old Testament times, this was the job of the prophets. To prophesy was not to predict the future, but to speak out against injustice, to name the sin that the prophet was seeing and to name the consequences that would surely come if the injustice remained. And guess what? For the most part, nobody liked them. Nobody wanted to hear from the prophets about their sin and be confronted that they needed to change, to change personally or to change their systems that were unjust. And sometimes it was really painful for the prophet, too, to have to speak the way they did. Just read through Jeremiah sometime. Who wants to be in that role? But God's purposes are always moving toward transformation and reconciliation. And it's crucial to keep that at the forefront as we think about confronting the wrongs we see around us. Otherwise, maybe we're just name-calling or acting in bad faith. Maybe we're stoking the outrage machine. Maybe we're just being skulls. The purpose must be to reconcile, to expose wrongdoing to the light so that healing can take place, not so that everyone will see that someone is a jerk and anyone who disagrees is just evil. Friends, this is hard. And in this climate of clanging cymbals and noisy gongs 24-7 that are driving me crazy, I'd like to tell Jesus that now is not a good time, really. But of course, now is exactly the time. It's always the right time to speak honestly and to do so in service of love and reconciliation.